All right, in this video, we'll look at example three and example four. Yeah, so example three and four add a few more steps because there's a little bit more going on. Um, so this next example, in example three, notice we have an X on both sides. Um, so we're gonna have to add some extra steps to kind of group all the X's onto the same side. So we wanna group the X's onto one side. Um, it doesn't matter which side. I tend to choose the left side just because there's really no reason for that though. You could choose the right side. Um, so to do that, I need to move the knight x. So to move the nine x, we do again opposites. It's all about opposites. So the opposite of nine x is minus nine x. All right, so those go away. And then this is allowed as long as we do the same thing to both sides. So I'm gonna minus nine x on the left. I'm gonna put it under the 14 x because we call those like terms so they can be added to each other. So the five is just hanging out. It can't really be added to either of these, um, but the 14 X and the nine X can be combined. So we'll do 14 minus nine, which is five. So it'll be five X. And then we still have a negative five left over on the right side. So it's starting to look a little bit more like the earlier examples. Um, we still need to solve for X. So we got to get rid of all this extra stuff. So. We're trying to isolate the x piece, so we're gonna do the opposite of five. So we're gonna minus five, because that's the opposite, so that goes away. As long as I do it to both sides, it's allowed. So we're left with five x on the left and negative 10 on the right. Two negative numbers is more negative. You can even check, there's a negative sign on your calculator if you wanna check. Um, but the idea is that you owe someone $5 and you owe them another $5, so you owe them $10. Um, and then the final step is to, again, get this x all by itself. Since we currently have five times x, the opposite of timesing is dividing. And as long as we do it to both sides, again, it's allowed. So x is equal to negative two. And if we're not sure, let's go ahead and check. So this one's a little bit more work to check because we have two x's. So we want to make sure five plus 14x is equal to nine x minus five. Um, if we do not get the same number on both sides, we messed up. Um, we don't care what that number is, we just want it to be the same. So on the left side, we'll plug in negative two. So we get five and then we get minus 28, because that'll turn negative, a negative times a positive is negative. And then five minus 28 would be negative 23. And so now we're just hoping we also get negative 23 on the right side. And if we did, all is good. So we'll plug in negative two again, right? You'll notice I'm just replacing the X's with our solution. That's called a solution. Um, so nine times negative two is negative 18 minus five, and that's negative 23, so we got it right. Um, again, the solution though is still negative two. This is just the checking process. So leave any questions below and I'm jumping into that final example. Um, so the last one adds parentheses. Um, so if you've never heard of the distributive property, you can click on the link I posted to get more detail. Um, but if you have heard of the distributive property, um, I'll just refresh you. The distributive property is telling me distribute the seven within the parentheses. It doesn't go to the negative 11 because it's not in parentheses. So we're basically going to do seven times two X minus seven times one, right? We distributed the seven to the two things inside. And then everything else we'll just copy down for now. That's the distributive law. So if we have parentheses, that's always the first step. If we don't have parentheses, we can skip this. Um, so let's simplify. We get 14x minus seven minus 11, and then we get six plus six x. And then this is where combining like terms comes into play. So like terms are either their x terms or y terms or no, um, no letter. So like seven and 11 are constants is what we call them. They're like terms. Um, if I had 14x and 12x, right, those are like terms. 
if I had 5y and 3y, those are like terms. But in this case, our like terms are the negative 7 and the negative 11. Um, they have to be on the same side. So 6 is not part of this. Like terms are on the same side. So if I do negative 7 and negative 11, that's more negative, And I end up with negative 18. And then we'll just continue. So this should look like the rest. So now we're going to group all the x's onto one side. Um, so again, it doesn't matter what side. I just tend to choose the left side, so I want to get rid of 6x. So the opposite of 6x is minus 6x. As long as I do it to both sides, it's allowed. And I'm going to line that up with the 14, because that has the x on it. So 14 minus 6 would be 8x. Minus 18 is still there, equals 6. We still need to move the 18. The opposite of negative 18 is positive 18. Right, as long as we're doing it to both sides again, we can do this. So I only have 8x on the left side. And I have 24 on the right side, 6 plus 18. And then our final step is division. And what's that? x is 3. 24 divided by 8. And then this one's probably even more important to check since there's so many steps. So just copying the original equation. And we're just going to plug in 3 for x and make sure both sides are the same. If you feel good with your calculator, you could actually just type it all at once. Um, but otherwise, we can just simplify it. So we get 6 minus 1. Now I'm following order of operations. Inside parentheses, 6 minus 1 is 5. So 7 times 5 minus 11. We get 35 minus 11, which is what? 24? Now let's check if we get 24 on the other side. This is the, how we decide if we're correct. So we'll get 6 plus 18, right? 6 times 3 is 18. 6 plus 18 is 24. So we got it.